both an economic and fiscal crisis in the state. When it comes to the fiscal crisis, uh, the reality is that we have to get uh, this current budget, uh, the soon to be forthcoming budget, and budgets for decades to come in line. We can no longer kick the can to the future. Uh, that's just unacceptable. Hi, welcome to Modern Times with Cal and Mike. I'm Cal Davenport. And I'm Mike Dory. And uh, if you've been paying attention to the news recently, you know about the protests in uh, the capital of Wisconsin over um, the uh, a bill introduced by the governor, Scott Walker, uh, mostly protested by government unions, particularly with the teachers' unions there and some other uh, uh, government unions in Wisconsin, as well as people who have come in from other states. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, regarding collective bargaining rights of those union members, as well as uh, pension benefits uh, or pension payments and, and uh, payments on medical benefits as well. Essentially, so. the, the, the governor's bill uh, requires employees to pay a larger amount of their, uh, their pensions and their, their health care premiums, so which amounts to uh, a little bit of a, of a cut in their wages. Now, I don't, and also the, the bill essentially says we're not bargaining on, uh, on those benefits and we'll, we're only going to bargain with you on wages. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, and as you can imagine, there's considerable um, debate and contention on this uh, amongst the union, union workers in the government. Um, as you can see in the beginning of our video when we started, you had uh, Governor Walker beginning a speech on the issue and you know there's a lot of feeling that the workers are being cheated it's you know the uh, the rich against the poor and people are trying to make this into all kinds of different things trying to skew it um, just flat out Wisconsin you know state government is out of money and they have know, to they have to close something like a 3.6 billion dollar deficit over the next couple of years so and, and unlike the federal government, they just can't continuously borrow money. Or, and they can't print any. They're, they're basically because they don't issue currency, they're not allowed to, to touch that. They have to balance their budget. Yeah, so, so if it, they don't have the money for it, they either cut it down or it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so Essentially. We have a, 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 Walker has proposed an alternative to these, to mm -hmm. the wage cuts for, for the employees. Now, uh, I, I do want to point out that um, uh, police, fire, and uh, emergency personnel have been exempted from mm -hmm. this. That, that is but, correct. Uh, the vast majority of the state employees would have their their benefits cut, or they would Teachers, have to cover. Teachers, people, construction workers, you know, uh, I saw a lot of painters in the protests there on some of the videos I've seen. But essentially because the, the governor is on money, we, we just can't pay they, they can't pay as much in, in, in Wisconsin as they would like. And uh, so, I mean, we have two alternatives. We have the, the, the cuts in the benefits, or uh, uh, Walker explains another one in uh, this, the very speech that we showed a clip of earlier. Yeah, and if you uh, go ahead and watch, you'll see what he has to say about that. The alternative in this budget alone in fiscal year uh, 2011 is to look at 1,500 uh, layoffs of state employees or up to 200,000, close to 200,000 children who would be uh, bumped off of Medicaid-related programs. In the next biennium, uh, if we were failed to make these changes, it would be the equivalent of anywhere from 5,500 uh, to 6,000 uh, state employees that would be, have to be laid off and a similar number, an equivalent number of local government employees in, in both municipalities, counties, as well as teachers and others in school districts. All right, so basically, as you can see from that clip, he's discussing more or less a, uh, say, a, a massive uh, layoff right. within the state government itself, as well as possible other local governments, you know, teachers of the, you know, at the city. So we're either going to have to have less teachers or lower paid teachers. Yeah, I think there's probably, especially in the economy we have today in this country, there's probably more people, I would say at least, I, I think it makes more sense to have more people employed at possibly a lower wage 
than to have, you know, people who are unemployed taking more money out of the state, you know, through unemployment and odd and end things. And, you know, I, it sucks. I, I don't actually think wish I had written in a note about marginal propensity to consume into this video because, sorry. Yeah. There too. So this is, there, there's, a, there's obviously a reason why this is the best alternative. You, the teachers get to keep their jobs. They have to, they have to mm -hmm. get paid a little bit less for, at this point, but, um, you know, we, they, they flat out don't like them or don't have the money they, and they don't, mm -hmm. they don't like the cuts, but, you know. You know, it's, it's push comes to shove. You got to do something. You mm -hmm. can't just, like he said, you can't just kick the can down the road. And it's been going on in not just Wisconsin, but in our state of, in our state of Michigan, in Michigan is a yeah. fantastic Ohio, example of that. I think Indiana had, had some. It's been going on around the country. Mm -hmm. I think it's been something that's been going on for decades now, but, um, it's just been kind of brewing here and it's finally coming to the surface. And it's kind of ironic uh, it, that it's, you know, it's been going on a few weeks after some the protests all, all around the Middle East. So um, a lot of the protesters here have been just, you know, have, have signs comparing Walker to Mubarak and everything. And they, they consider... I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at what Cal's saying. It's something else came up here. It's basically... <laughs> Off camera, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. It, the protesters are basically considering this tantamount, but some of them are, are saying this is basically tantamount to a, a, a democracy movement in, uh, in countries like Egypt or you know Tunisia or mm -hmm. Libya or anything going on here. And, you know, I, I just think that's... It's thoughtless that, I, that's offensive. and disrespectful. It's, it's offensive that people are saying that this is, you know, they're, they're connecting this with, with the... Uh, Protests and the and the uh, and the things going on in Egypt and in Libya. Somebody and called him, you know, dictatorial in, the, in kind of a you know. Implied. Those people over there in Libya are getting shot at for their freedom. They're yeah. dying, you know. This, and it's a totalitarian regime. Yeah, totally, they're, 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 a totally different scale. They're, you, they're, and to say to try to compare it that you know, well, it's going on over there it can happen over here with with what I think it was probably maybe. I think it just said with pensions, it was like a 6% of the pay would yeah, be five, having to increase. And I, and, I, and I imagine a little more than, than that for the yeah, medical I, I mean, benefits I mean, on top. I mean, compared to being oppressed by a dictator and being shot at when you're trying to... Okay, I, I don't think they're even on the same, same level, but, you know. I, right, I really well, I do find really, that offensive, even though I'm not personally connected with either or. Right. Yeah, and, and we sympathize with everybody tightening their belts during, you know, recession and everything, but it's just, it's totally different, and I, I think it's just, it's, it's a lack of perspective here to even compare the two, so, mm -hmm. but anyway, the, the, uh, um, the protesting fervor, the spirit has uh, oh, yeah. made its way over here, and, you know, it's, it, apparently it's very cool to be a part of a protest, even if you don't necessarily know. Hey, don't give it away, what, don't give it away, just, just let them watch the video, all right, yeah, see, yeah. Well, let's let just, protest, yeah. See, see some of the, the uh, cool students who have accompanied there. We should go protesting sometime, Cal. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. We were inspired by uh, the following yeah. video clip. We just thought it looked like so much fun. We're going to have to do this sometime. Yeah. All right. East High School. East High School. Madison East? Yep. Yes. No class today? No. 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 Your teachers know you guys are here and they're cool yep. with it? That's yeah. Cool. Our teachers brought us here today. For what? What are you are you guys protesting? Are you testifying or? You know, I don't really know. I guess we're protesting today. Um, we're trying to stop whatever this dude is doing. <laughs> protesting. Oh, you'll be good at it. You know, they have no idea what they're talking about. Like they don't. They they know. They have no idea. They don't even care. No. There's clearly no concern. So, you know, hence the uh, the. Let, so let's. The, uh, protesting. Uh. <laughs> All right, we couldn't help adding that in there. So it's anyway, so, let's get back to get back to topic here, right? That's the bottom line. Okay, so we're talking here about like this. Um, they're they're saying their rights to collective bargaining have been um, basically uh, taken away, mm -hmm. and uh, well, there's a problem with that, and that is that for there to be any bargain, um, you basically need. Uh, two sides to, to be able to come together and make a deal. So uh, let's see what uh, Governor Walker has to say on that on, in our last video clip here. Mm -hmm.
Good faith negotiation requires a give and take. We are broke in this state. We've been broke for years. People have ignored that for years, and it's about time somebody stood up and told the truth. The truth is we don't have money to offer. We don't have finances to offer. This is what we have to offer. And if you're going to negotiate, you've got to have something to offer. We don't have something. So Governor Walker pretty much uh, <clears throat> talks about the, the fact that basically they're they don't have money to negotiate with. They don't have money to, to uh, for there to be mm -hmm. a bargain. Yeah, he's, he's basically just says, yeah, in order to bargain with somebody, you have to have something to offer. There's nothing to offer on right. the, the side. And like what, you know, the when he goes state. Hmm? Essentially, if, if you don't have the money to, to pay for something when you go to a store, the, you, you can't say, uh, the, the, the shop owner can't demand that you give them money that you don't have for, for a product. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. There's just no deal, or else you know, somebody has to make a concession. And as we mentioned before, they, they can't just pull the money out of thin air like the federal government does. Right. Somehow or another, the federal government has continually operated in a deficit for mm -hmm. years, and they seem, to, they seem to be doing all right, at least now. So, you know, but <laughs> the state, they, state governments don't... You can't really do that. Right, right. And there's kind of a line that's been drawn over the years with public sector union employees and private sector ones, government union employees. Um, and uh, it, in uh, the case of uh, Calvin Coolidge, uh, when he was a governor, he fired some uh, protesting, uh, some striking um, union police officers. And uh, in 1981, President Reagan fired uh, air traffic controllers who were striking, uh, basically, saying that they, they don't have a right to strike in against the uh, the public interest because you know, it's, the, it's the government and they, they can't uh, interfere with the functioning of the government that's mm -hmm. you know they're, they're civil servants and well the air, the air traffic controllers are crucial to public safety uh, and, and now Pre uh, President uh, Reagan and and then Governor Coolidge were um, they weren't the only people to, to have a problem with uh, collective bargaining uh, in the, uh, in, for government employees. Uh, the, the, in 1955, George Meany, who was the, the president of the AFL-CIO at the time, said it is impossible to bargain collectively with the government. And President Roosevelt, in 1937, he explains further. He said all government employees should realize that the process of collective bargaining, as usually understood, cannot be transplanted into the public service. The very nature and purposes of government make it impossible for administrative officials to represent fully or to bind the employer in mutual discussions with government employee organizations. The employer is the whole people who speak by means of laws enacted by their representatives in Congress. That's where the bargaining takes place, essentially. He goes on to say, since their own services have to do with the functioning of the government, a strike of public employees manifests nothing less than an intent on their part to prevent or obstruct the operations of government until their demands are satisfied. Such action, looking toward the paralysis of government by those who have sworn to support it, is unthinkable and intolerable. And uh, you can't really say that Roosevelt and, and the president of the AFL-CIO are exactly anti-union here. I mean, they just understood that it's not practical to... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, to go, you know, to have any kind of collective bargaining like we have in, in private set with private sector unions in with the government workers. Pretty much, I think they pretty much laid it all out there. I, I am not a big fan of Roosevelt at all, and I'm certainly not a fan of uh, the uh, AFL CIO. But I they have to say that I absolutely is. agree with both of those statements wholeheartedly. So that we are running, gonna, we're whatever. running a little low on time. So. Uh, I hate to cut this short, but <clears throat> that pretty much concludes our episode, wouldn't you say, Cal? That, that it does. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next week. Oh, let you go.